Hello everyone, welcome to our live webinar on how to make training sessions more effective and engaging. I'm Saad Tariq, your host for today. Thank you so much for attending our interactive webinar where we'll help you understand how is it that you can make your trainings more effective by following a few basic steps that would work wonders. There is no right or wrong way of doing this, but there are a few things that could help you succeed the next time you plan on conducting a training session. Now, before I introduce our expert for today, I would like to share a few basic housekeeping rules. The recording and the presentation deck of this session will be sent to all the participants in the next few days. We would like you to submit your questions as well, because we'll be answering them in our Q&A session after the presentation. We have uploaded a number of useful handouts for trainees, for trainers, so that they can plan and conduct their training programs more effectively. You can download them from the Handouts tab on your GoToWebinar toolbar. Spread the word about this webinar using our hashtag, hashtag CSTrainings, and you can also shoot out your questions on social media. Before I start, I would like you all to answer a quick poll for us, which you will see on your screens now. The question is, what is the biggest challenge you face when planning or conducting a training program? So the options that we've given you over here are the ones that we believe are the most common challenges that people face when planning or conducting a training program. The first one's time management. You've got relevance of content. You've got understanding and engaging your audience, dealing with difficult situations, and others. And if, remember, if you're selecting others, we want you to specify the challenge in the chat tab. So I would like you to start voting and we will give you 10 seconds to see what the results are, and then we'll share the results with you as well. We would like you to answer this so that we can identify what is it that comes across as the biggest of challenges when it comes to planning a training session. Okay, I see that we have people voting in and 50% of you so far are saying that understanding and engaging your audience is the biggest challenge. Perfect. So we've got a lot of people who've actually given their votes. We'll give you another five seconds and then we'll move on. Perfect. So we've got all our votes. Let me close the poll and share the results with you. So if you can see the results right now, it says that relevance of contact, 25% of you are saying is the diff most difficult the biggest challenge that you face. 50% of you are saying that dealing with difficult situations is the biggest challenge, and 25% say that understanding and engaging your audience is a challenge when it comes to planning and conducting. Thank you so much for your votes. Now, let's move on. Let me introduce our expert trainer for today's webinar, Talal Sayer. Talal Sayer has been in the training and development industry for more than a decade now. He has worked with established MNCs in developing effective training programs, and he has been working with CustomerService.ae to help us develop innovative and effective DIY training games and programs. So without any further delays, over to you, Talal. Hi, everyone, and thank you for attending today's session on how to make trainings more engaging and effective. Today, I will be sharing with you some tips and strategies on how to make the sessions engaging and interactive for your participants. Before I begin the session, I would like to start with this quote that I share with all trainers and teachers alike. A trainer tells, a good trainer explains, a superior trainer demonstrates, and a great trainer inspires. So I hope by the end of the session, you will walk away inspired. I am a firm believer that trainings is a skill and not an art, and by that I mean that anyone can become an exceptional trainer and build on the relevant skills. If you are new at delivering training sessions, remember, everyone is nervous. We are nervous about the types of questions the audience will ask. We are nervous about whether participants will enjoy the session, and will people have a positive experience. So hopefully, these tips will help you overcome some of these challenges. First, I will talk about 
planning. So here are a couple of tips that will help you plan and deliver your session to ensure your participants walk away with that positive learning experience. Remember, you always need to plan a session. As a trainer, you need to know exactly what you're going to talk about and how you're going to present it. So first, you need to learn to make your content relevant. Your participants have access to all types of information and can get quite easily bored and uninterested. So you need to know your audience and tailor your, your content accordingly. Two, use a lot of examples that they can relate with. Uh, participants are more attentive if you use examples that they can visualize and understand. Think of analogies. To do this effectively, do some homework on the type of industry your participants are from and the types of problems they face on a day-to-day -day basis. Remember, your participants are there to hear from you. Otherwise, they could just get it online or read it from any textbook. The idea is to bring your trainings to life. So using a lot of examples, making it much more interactive by having the content relevant is what you're actually there for. Also, you need to learn to visualize your session. I always look at a training session as an act or a play. I run through every scenario. I visualize how I will introduce a topic or an activity, where I will stand when I'm saying such a thing, what do I want the participants to be able to do. I even anticipate the types of questions they will ask. So I can usually plan out everything in my head before I actually go and deliver it. But keep in mind, you always need to have a backup plan. So things are not going to go the way you intend. Maybe the participants are not enjoying a particular activity. Or maybe you've spent too much time explaining a topic or answering a question. So be prepared to mix it up. Always have a few fillers that are relevant to that particular thing you're talking about while you're presenting and just make, mix it up by adding a few points in the middle. Finally, before you begin, make sure you test out that activity you plan to conduct. A lot of the times what you imagine will happen in your head don't actually work out in real life. So conduct some dry runs. Get comfortable with the content before you actually go out and deliver the training. Now I will talk about how to engage our audience. First, you need to learn to ask a lot of questions. Now, <clears throat> understand participants' perspective. It will make your sessions much more interactive. Now think of questions that will help them further and enhance their knowledge base rather than putting pressure on them by asking them questions on the content that you've already taught. Remember, the objective is not to put participants on the spot by asking them to answer questions. Rather, you want to encourage questions that will encourage further learning and further discussion. Two, keep a track of their body language. Be aware of what is happening around you and keep a close eye on your participants' body language. If you see someone who is staring into space or, let's say, slouching on a seat, chances are you've probably lost his attention. Remember, it is your job to keep them engaged and not, and not their job to be engaged. So whenever you sense you're losing your audience, you need to change something to bring them back and re-engage them. And finally, you need to learn to move and keep moving. You are the boss in that training session. You own it, so you can do whatever you want. You can stand at any point in the room. You can move around. Moving around will make participants constantly be engaged with you as they will follow your movement. But remember, don't overdo it. Where people start focusing on your movements and where you will go next rather than what you're actually saying. Also, as a trainer, you have the capacity to ask participants to move around. So get them to shift places stand up, ask them to come in front of the training session. These little tricks will force people to move as compared to sitting in one place and continuously listening to your lecture. Thank you so much, Talal. Before we move on, I'd like to ask you for your views on what makes an effective trainer. I would like you to tell us what are the basic traits or essential traits for an effective trainer. We've given you a few options over here. 
we would like you to select the ones that you believe are required or essential for an effective trainer. So we'll give you 15 seconds to answer this. Good, We've, we start, we now have the votes coming in, very good. So we see that most of you are saying it that knowing it all is very important for an essential trainer or an effective trainer. Some of you are saying that knowing your audience and devising the content accordingly is important. And most of you are also saying that asking for feedback and using it wisely. Very good. So let me share the results now. So if, as you can see, the results say that knowing your audience and devising the content accordingly, 67% of you say that is important. 50% of you say that know it all is an essential trait for an effective trainer. And 50% are saying that ask for feedback and make use of it wisely. Thank you so much for your answers. Now we'll move ahead with the presentation. Great, so now I'm going to talk about some of the qualities you need as a trainer to really become that exceptional trainer. First, you need to learn to motivate. I can't tell you how important it is to appreciate someone for doing a task. Remember, your participants might not be as comfortable or as confident. So getting other participants to applaud them when they ask a question or simply telling someone, hey, excellent or good job when they complete an activity will help build confidence among participants and remove their fear so that they can be more engaged and contribute more in the training session. Two, you need to have fun. Remember, you want your participants to enjoy the experience and they will end up learning a lot more too. If you are not having fun in your session, chances are your participants are not having fun either. I find that a sessions that are more fun have always been more energetic, and I walk away getting a positive vibe from participants. I should point out, though, that this isn't a stand-up comedy. So having a sense of humor is not about cracking a lot of jokes. So keep a track of your talk time. Also, avoid jokes that have a mean connotation and avoid picking on particular participants as the butt of all your jokes. A trainer needs to know how to manage and adapt to a range of situations that may arise. You will need to manage these situations by always maintaining and keeping control and thinking on your feet. Focus on your backup plans that we mentioned earlier. I once had a situation where two participants who clearly did not get along with one another were constantly arguing or putting each other's ideas down. So what I did was I made sure that the conversation always went, went through me so I maintained control. And I also, during the activities of pair works and group activities, I kept those two apart. I would like to now move on to some side points that usually don't follow into a category, but I think every trainer should be aware of. As a trainer, you need to challenge your participants. You will never really know who is who in your session until it starts. So keep a range of activities with various difficulty levels in case the activity is too simple for one participant and you can constantly challenge them by adding more challenging activities. I'll give you an example. Recently, I conducted a customer service training for one of my clients, which was how to deal with difficult situations or understanding customer. So I designed some role play activities where participants had to solve a customer's complaint. What I realized was for some participants, this task was too easy. So to make it more difficult, I asked those participants to find the solution with certain restrictions, such as I told those participants, well, you can only ask closed-ended questions. So varying the difficulty levels will get participants more involved and more engaged as they try to solve those various problems. Have you ever had one of those participants who challenges everything you say, or that participant who is just there to have a good time and thinks, this training is a complete waste of time. You need to avoid confrontations and you want to avoid getting sucked into one-on-one -on -one discussions. Remember, there are other people sitting in your session and it's not just about this one or two individuals. 
So the way to deal with this is you need to be able to answer those questions by getting everyone involved. Also note, you are in control. So if you feel you are losing control of this discussion, you can choose to take a question later or answer it during the break. Always maintain control uh, when dealing with confrontational issues. I mentioned the word talk time earlier. For those of you who don't know, talk time is the amount of time you spend talking. Now, depending on the amount of time you have to deliver a particular session and the amount of time you have with the audience, this will determine how much talk time you have. But as a trainer, you need to try to balance your talk time with the participants' talk time. Because if you are doing all the talking, chances are you are not making this a very engaged activity. I would like to end with a few points on how to make your activities much more interesting. For starters, I always find that activities that involve a sense of competition always gets participants more involved. So whenever you do an activity, try to make it fun by dividing participants into teams, or give them rewards, or ask them to beat the clock. Even if the activity is as simple as to complete a question in the handout, you can assign a time limit or tell the team that the first team who completes the task wins. Remember, you need to keep your activities simple. Any activity that takes too long to explain and set up is probably going to fail. You have limited time in your training session anyways. So you have limited time to conduct an activity and get participants to reflect on it. So you need to ensure participants get straight into that activity so they can learn from it. So the simpler the activity, the chances are it will be successful. And finally, be creative. Think of something different. Use different props and tool. The more interesting the activity, the more the participants will enjoy it. Ask yourself this question when you test it out. Did you have fun playing the uh, did you have fun playing the activity or conducting the activity? If you did, chances are your participants will too. So that brings me to the end of these tips. I hope that these tips were useful. Thank you so much for some valuable insight on how to make our trainings achieve more. Now, before we move to the Q&A session, we would, like you tell, we would like to tell you a little about customerservice.ae and what is it that we do over here. So, did you know that 66% of participants feel bored during a training session? We at customerservice.ae provide DIY training games designed to help make your trainings much more interactive and engaging. Our unique games focus on a range of skills, primarily on customer service experience, such as problem solving, dealing with difficult situations, giving instructions, and communication skills. Do you think your staff can improve their communication skills of giving instructions? We have designed a game just for you. Check out our game, Pipe It Right. Buy our game and it will support you to build on your training goals and objectives that you want to achieve with your sessions. These kits, they come with unique props, simple and easy to use instructions, and are guaranteed to be fun and make them learn. You can always visit our website to schedule a demo with our trainers, and we will show you how our games work. Now, let's move to the Q&A session because we have a lot of questions coming in. First of all, thank you so much for all the questions. We will go ahead and we'll try and answer as many as we can. So let's start with the first one. The first one is how many participants how many participants should be should be there in a training session? Omer is asking how many participants should be there in a training session? Yes, that's a, a very good question and a question that we get asked a lot during a training session. Um, I always believe that the smaller the group, the more chances you have of really passing a concept on and engaging customers. So whenever I deal with clients, I always remind them that if it is a session which is designed to be more facilitating, where you want to engage more with uh, with your participants, you need to learn to have, well, you need to have a small group. The smaller the group, the more interactive it will be. So I usually design courses that have groups within the size of about 20 and 24. 
I usually keep these even numbers, and the reason for having them in even numbers is that you can divide them into pairs of two or give them into groups of four. So the smaller the group, the more interactive it will be. At the same time, try to keep your numbers in even so that you can design, divide them into groups and in pairs. I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much, Dalal. Umair, I hope that, yes, you found that answer useful. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, Raza is asking, how do you gauge the effectiveness of a training program? So usually when you're conducting a training, there's something called a PPP cycle where you present, practice, and perform. And in that performance is when you're actually gauging the effectiveness of a training. So whenever you present a concept, have an activity ready that will allow you to evaluate whether those concepts that you've actually taught have been demonstrated in the activity that you're conducting. And if they're able to complete that activity, chances are that they will be able to, chances are you'll be able to measure the effectiveness of how well those uh, present, uh, the concepts were presented. Also keep in mind this cannot happen in every single case. So sometimes the effectiveness of a training will only be measured via com continuous uh, evaluations or maybe have to go back to them as mystery shopping if you're doing a sales and service training where you'll actually have to see their performance and see if those problems have actually been solved. But in an in a, in a, in a actual training session, you will only be able to gauge the effectiveness of a training by doing a post-training evaluation in the form of a handout or a questionnaire or something to gauge how much they've actually trained or do some kind of fun activity where you can apply those concepts that you've taught in the activity and if they've able to and if they've been able to complete that activity chances are they've retained what you have taught them very good okay so we have another very interesting question and this is Arsalan asking how long should the training session be ideally what's the duration of an effective and engaging training session so when I design my trainings, you have sometimes the limitations really come from the clients if you're, if you're going to an external trainer. Even if you're an internal trainer, you will have some time restrictions defined by your department head or your, or your client. Usually, a training session should be no longer than an hour and a half. And what I mean by a session is actually that point in time when you're actually presenting a concept. So after about an hour and a half or max two hours, you'll need to give a short break so they can walk away, stretch their legs, retain what they've got, and come back. So if I'm doing a full day training session, I usually have about two to three breaks in there so that I can constantly get them re-engaged. Remember, the trick really is when you give them a break is how to re-engage them. And there are some very uh, useful techniques that we would share with you if you would like later as well. Because of time limitations, we can't discuss them here. But Having breaks is very important so that they can refresh themselves and get back re-engaged. So about an hour, an hour and a half for each session when you're presenting a concept. Thank you for that, Dalal. I see that we have a lot of questions coming in, and we will most probably be answering these questions via email because we do not have enough time that we can go ahead and answer all of them. So we will take one more question. This is from Eamon, and she's asking, how do I deal with challenges during a session? Well, I mentioned earlier in my slides that you always need to have a backup plan. So as a trainer, I preempt the types of challenges that will come across. For example, if the challenge is a technical issue where my projector is not working or a particular prop is not performing, then I'll have a backup plan of what to do when this, when this uh, technical error occurs. So you always need to have a backup plan to deal with these types of challenges. If you're talking about challenges on how to deal with difficult participants, for example, one participant is you know, not listening or not paying attention, you'll need to engage them. And this really depends on situation to situation on how you choose to engage uh, your audience. So for example, like I said earlier, having a backup plan of various activities or moving on from one content to another content because you think this content is not really engaging them and then coming back to it later. The key really is that as a trainer you need to be able to think on your feet, you need to be diplomatic, you need to be able to understand what the challenge is and, and deal with it. But most importantly, do not get sucked into a, into a confrontation and don't let it overcome you always maintain control. 
on, on a side note, I would also add that as a challenge, you need to remember that a lot of the participants actually don't know when you're stumbling. So even if you feel like, I don't know what to do next, your participants probably don't know. So if you keep a calm and, and you maintain confidence and you're in control, chances are you will do fine. Thank you so much, Talal. There's one more that I would like to ask. Shoaib is asking us, what differentiates between a good and a great trainer? I know that you did answer this initially when you shared that quote with us, but if you can just elaborate on it a little. Well, I hope some of these tips that I've mentioned is really about how to become a great trainer. So a lot of people view training as getting a concept across, and to be fair, that is actually the training objective. As long as a participant can remember what you said, he's learned the skill, and he's able to apply that skill, then technically your job is done, so you are a good trainer. But what a great trainer does is he inspires participants so that they can take that information and not just apply it, but then transcend it with other participants and really feel motivated and walk away with that positive experience. So the difference between a good trainer and a great trainer is one where the training is far more engaging and the participants walk away with a much more positive learning experience. I hope I've answered the question. Thank you so much, Dalal, and I would like to thank each and every one of you for attending today's webinar. I hope you found it useful and the tips and techniques shared by Dalal would help you make your trainings more engaging in the near future. Remember, we will be sharing the recording and the presentation deck with you via email. You can follow us on social media platforms and call us to schedule a demo if you'd like to see the results of how our first of its kind DIY training games work. Have a great rest of the day and weekend. Thank you so much, everyone.